Many entrepreneurs and founders tell us that one of the most important things an entrepreneur can do is listen to their peers and fellow founders. Podcasts, TED Talks, interviews, newsletters, the internet alone is a gold mine for insights. But there's one medium that founders love to revisit over and over again. The trusty, timeless object that always makes your Zoom backdrop look super refined. Books. Books, I would say... Favorite book, without question. Oh, let me, let me have a think. Uh, I have some of my books here. Let me just have a browse and see which one really stands out to me. I'm about stories. I can read any book. I love books. So I, I highly recommend. So we had to ask, what books would you recommend to other entrepreneurs? Oh, and we put together all these recommendations for free on our site, links below. There are plenty of books out there that are amazing, even if you're starting your journey, on what you should or should know about, and then how good or bad it's going to be on certain days <laughs> to really talk you out of it, but also other books to build on that, to learn what you should expect in year two, what, what happens in year three, what terminologies are out there that you're going to have to learn, like CAC or MRR number, your AR number, all the financial terms and acronyms that people throw around. You're going to have to brush up and learn those definitions fairly quickly. Project Phoenix is one of my favorite books. It describes a startup, even though it's a more mature company, and how everyone's wearing different hats, and if they don't work together, it all falls apart. And it's true. It, it, we're all working together. It's such a small team. If one person's not in the game or is thinking of leaving or doesn't like it or is a cancer, it derailed the whole thing. And it almost happened to us twice in year one. I highly recommend, if you have a good idea, just maybe reading The Mom Test if you haven't. It's a book that helps you figure out how to talk to customers. It's called The Mom Test. The reason the book was called The Mom Test is like, how do you get feedback that's not biased from your own mother? Obviously, the idea is like, even if I were to ask my mom if trash was a good idea, she's going to say yes because she's going to hurt my feelings. But there's a way that you can get advice from your mother that is not biased, that can actually lead to very, very good advice. And, and there's a certain set of rules on how you should ask those questions and get really good feedback. That is something I wish that we would have done early on and done differently. So it's something I'm pretty passionate about now whenever I talk to entrepreneurs. You don't need to spend a lot of money. You don't need to get investment right away. And you certainly don't need to build out a product before you have a customer. Quick note here about The Mom Test. This book by Rob Fitzpatrick is especially useful for those in the idea stage of their business. That's a lot of you in our audience. Oh, and he loves answering questions same as us, so if you like the book, go ahead and ask him direct follow-up questions. Score! I love Shoe Dog. I think it's such an incredible book because a lot of these founder stories, they are very proud individuals, and they should be, but that kind of shields us from really seeing the raw perspective of what they went through. It's always like, yeah, I failed here, but then I learned all of this and then I made an unbelievable company. And you're like, okay, like I don't think that's gonna work out for everybody. But Shoe Dog gives you the most raw story where you're standing next to Phil Knight as he's selling shoe by shoe, going through all of the situations that he has to go through to the point where you actually forget you're reading about Nike. You're like, oh, Boo Adidas, they're the you know big stars in the space, and you, and you realize, wait, you know Nike's worth hundreds of billions of dollars for a reason. Can't suggest that enough. We make everyone read the book Lying by Sam Harris because Carlo made me read it, and the book outlines this all of these scenarios, and it tries to make the point that even if you think that lying is not a good idea ever, just anything that you would rationalize that it it doesn't matter, it's just a tiny lie. Harris makes the argument that it matters. And so that kind of stuck with us, especially because you're a self-managed, fully remote company. But also, you know, if you just say, I haven't done this because I watched TV today because I was super tired and I had a long week, that's okay. As long as you're fully transparent, it's, it's, it's all good. And so we've kind of made that one of the fundamental parts of our company. I have three books that I would recommend. The Steve Jobs biography, that really had a big impact on me. The book from Peter Thiel, From Zero to One, I really, 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 really love that book. I really like the way Peter Thiel thinks, because in a way I think the same way. And he really 
explains things simple. Google basically owns the whole internet, so it's almost impossible to explain it in one sentence. But Peter Thiel can do it. And then the third book is 48 Laws of Power. In terms of like startup books, Zero to One, Peter Thiel's book, I've read that multiple times. I still enjoy it. Stephen Pressfield, all things Stephen Pressfield, Do the Work, Turning Pro, the Courage to be Disliked was another good one, Tribe of Mentors. Most useful book I've ever read for me was Mindsight from Dan Siegel about the neuroplasticity, the ability of the brain to rewire itself and to outlearn or outgrow historical triggers, uh, which has been extremely useful for me. Best one to start would be like Rich Dad Poor Dad. So Rich Dad Poor Dad by um, Robert Kiyosaki and Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. There's actually a really great book called Traction by the DuckDuckGo founder um, who talks about like parallelizing both product development and essentially figure out distribution. Because um, the idea being like, well, if you have a great product, you can't figure out how to distribute it. What's the point? <laughs> uh, and vice versa. And which is actually was a new way of thinking for me because I'm like a product person. I definitely recommend a book called Getting to Yes. That was one of the, I think, most, one of the more useful books I was exposed to. It's all about thinking through negotiation in a way that helps you get to yes. So it's a win-win for both parties. You know, the faster you can get to that and figure out what's important to you and what's important to the other party and both parties feel like it's a win. There's a lot of good examples and a lot of good um, lessons in that book that I think about quite frequently. That's a pretty good book. I would say Building a Story Brand is one of the best books by Don by Donald Miller is one of the best books you can you can get as a founder. It's about how you build your brand so it's useful to your user and, and, and it makes your user the hero in their journey uh, rather than making your brand the hero um, uh, in the journey. Uh, that and um, obviously Awesome by April Dunford are some of the books that have had the biggest influence for me kind of as a founder and all and, and, and my thinking. Especially since I'm a technical founder, like I come from a tech key background and I needed to kind of get myself out of the technical programmer mindset and more into the product focused mindset and, and books like that help a lot. There's The Meritocracy Trap, which came out recently, and there's a great book called Status Anxiety that I wrote some time ago. And, you know, this is a this is a, a, a psychological disease that capitalism imposes on all of us who are playing it. The idea is that, well, anybody can be as successful as they want. It's capitalism, right? And there's some truth to that, right? It's a beautiful thing about America is that you can really start something out of nowhere and you can, you know, you can be wildly successful by any metric. The downside of that open opportunity is that people have that sense that if I don't accomplish that, then I'm somehow not good. I'm a failure. And, and then beyond that, there's the sort of legislation or the, the sort of codification of that sort of thing that if you're poor, you're poor because you didn't work hard enough, which is the really dark side of the capitalist story. So anyway, that's a big topic, right? And I would highly recommend those books to folks. And I think it is, you need to come to terms with that. You need to understand that, you know, your own self-worth is not based on those metrics and that you need to find your own definition for what success is. Absolutely. One that is absolutely amazing in terms of thinking about the world is Factfulness by um, Hans Rosling. He gives you data about the world that actually makes it seem like the world isn't going down the way most people think it is and, and the way the media think it is. You know, he, he tells you about how, you know, worldwide child mortality is going down, how girls education is going up, how education in general is going up and how in general the world is trending up in most of the statistics that make sense. I sometimes gift it to people that have a fairly negative outlook about what is going on with the world and just letting them know, well, no, we're actually actually doing pretty okay in most respects. So yeah, I would recommend that book a lot. Okay, I think we have enough recommendations to last us a while. Reading and learning from all kinds of sources gives you a well-rounded perspective as you develop your business from the inside out. These recommendations are all definitely worth looking into, so remember that we have the full list on our website. Check it out, and happy reading!